Hi folks, welcome to another of my Pete's Picks videos where I uh, show some of my recent acquisitions. Um, these basically come from three different sources. Uh, Discogs, Finders Keepers and uh, a couple of RSD uh, pickups. Anyway, if you, first off, if you're wondering why the, uh, the Italian flag Italy play Belgium tonight in the quarterfinals of the Euros. So I've got to support the old home nation. Can't see us winning now somehow. Uh, it's also in response to Mr. Walker and his uh, terrible fashion sense of donning an England shirt in his last video. Forza Lazzuri. <laughs> anyway. Enough of that, let's get on to the music. Uh, the f first album I'm going to show is this one by Pir Pauka. This is why I was, this was the one I was searching for on uh, Discogs. Uh, this is their first album from 1975, which was originally re released on Love Records, the Finnish label. Pir Pauka were a Finnish pro band. Um, this one, though, is a 1978 reissue uh, on, I think, Love Records, uh, Swedish arm, Svenska uh, Love. Um, Perpauka, like I say, were a prog band um, formed by uh, a bunch of jazz musicians. So there's a lot, obviously a large jazz influence here, but also a lot of uh, Scandinavian folk and world music influences. Um, Excellent stuff. I've got their second album, which I think I prefer to this, but then I know that one better and I've only had a chance to listen to this once, but highly rated. So as I was getting that one off uh, Discogs, uh, I thought I'd have a look at the seller and see what else he was selling to try and offset the um, postage costs, as you do. And I saw you were selling a load of uh, decent albums for about six pounds each. So I thought I'll help myself to some of those. Ended up getting another six. Um, first off was this album by the great Ravi Shankar. Sounds of the Sitar with Alaraka on Tabla. Excellent. Brilliant stuff. I love uh, Ravi Shankar's music. Uh, this one I th is on the Fontana label. And I think this one was recorded or released in 1966. I think you'd all know what to expect from a Ravi Shankar album and you wouldn't be disappointed. But I also picked up another Ravi Shankar album, and this is a sitar recital, again with uh, Alaraka on tabla. This one, I think it's from 1968, and this me is on the transatlantic label. Again, brilliant music. What I like about this album is it's got some writing across the top which says thanks for lending me the car, love Stephanie. I know a lot of people don't uh, like the people writing on their albums and or put their names on but I, I quite like it. Uh, I'd love to know who Stephanie was and who she lent her car to. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if you could see the full history of some of the albums that you've picked up. But again, brilliant music from Mr. Shankar. The third one I've picked up was this one, Tibetan Bells by Henry Wolfe and Nancy Hennings with Drew Gladstone. I've got uh, Tibetan Bells too, and I've got the album they did with the Grateful Dead's Mickey Hart. Um, this is lovely ambient, uh, I suppose you could call it new age music, performed mainly on, as it says, Tibetan bells and Tibetan singing bells. Um, 
It's beautiful music, really soothing, hypnotic, uh, well recommended. Next up, we go to the Incredible String Band. This is their album from, oh, I'm not sure which year it is, 73, 1973. And it's No Ruinous Feud. This was their, I think, their 11th album, uh, their penultimate, penultimate album. Uh, it's usually said to be their weakest album. Not a lot of people seem to like this one. Uh, to be honest, I thought it wasn't so bad. I thought it was pretty good. Um, you're not going to get that uh, eccentric weirdness of the early... Uh, ISB, but um, side one particularly was very good with songs like Down Before Cafe, Saturday Maybe, Old Buccaneer, uh, and At the Lighthouse Dance. Um, this is more produced and, in fact, uh, more of a sort of a standard folk rock album. In fact, jigs, um, a set of instrumental tunes which are really reels rather than jigs uh, on when they do those they sound exactly like fairport convention um, side two isn't as strong uh, it starts off with a couple of uh, sort of frivolous numbers and there's a another frivolous number further on but overall it's it's a listenable album and i think it's a keeper so not as bad as some people make out Next, we go to some jazz rock, and this completes my Isotope collection. This is their third album, Deep End. Isotope were a UK uh, sort of fusion band. Uh, at this point, they were made up of uh, Gary Boyle, excellent guitarist, Nigel Morris on drums, Zoe Cronenberger on uh, keyboards, Frank Roberts on keyboard and Dan K. Brown on bass guitar. Um, it's produced by Robin Lumley of uh, Brand X fame and uh, Morris Pert of Brand X plays uh, some percussion on here and Hugh Hopper of Soft Machine plays uh, bass on one track. Uh, sort of funky fusion, really good. I think, as I said, this was their third and final and it's like I said, it completes my uh, collection of their three albums. Excellent stuff for all Fusion fans. And sticking with the Fusion, we get this album, but oh, better take it out of the cover, get rid of the glare. This is Larry Coriel's 11th House, live in Europe. Now this is uh, an unofficial album on a sort of white label, no track listing on it. Uh, it's purported to have been recorded, they think, in Germany in around 1975. Uh, superb playing on this. The band at this point were obviously Larry Coriel on uh, guitar. Mike Mandel on uh, keyboards, Mike Lawrence on trumpet, uh, John Lee on bass, not just any bass, but a 13-year-old Fender jazz bass, and uh, the great Alphonse Mouzon on drums and percussion. Excellent fusion music. Uh, to be honest, the, the star for me on here is Mike Lawrence and his trumpet playing. Excellent, excellent stuff. And all the, for it being an official and recorded live, it's a quality recording. Uh, I don't know whether it was originally for a radio broadcast or it was a soundboard, but the quality is superb. Right, and that, those were the ones I got on Discogs. Now, I had one record on uh, pre-order from Finders Keepers Records. And 
th that was this one. The second volume in their Strain, Crack and Break series. Music from the Nurse with Wound List, Volume 2, Germany. Volume 1 was French bands and music. Now, I don't know if you know, but Nurse with Wound were, are, I still think they're going, uh, a UK um, avant-garde band led by Steve Stapleton. Um, I think the first album came back out in the early 80s, I think. Um, on that first album, they, in the liner notes, they had a massive list of artists and albums that had influenced them. Uh, as you can guess, mostly on the weird <laughs> avant-garde and progressive rock side. Um, and that list became famous. Um, people would try and collect all the, uh, the albums on it. Um, so what Finders Keepers have done, are, I've uh, taken bands from that um, list and compiled, compiled them into uh, these double albums. Like I said, the first one was dealing with French bands. This is dealing with German bands. And on here you get uh, Wolfgang Downer, My Solid Ground, Association PC, Fritz Müller, Ex Magma, Anima Sound, Tomorrow's Gift, Out of Focus, Brainstorm, Thirsty Moon, Gomorra, and Brain Ticket. Excellent music. I'm really looking forward to seeing what, which country is going to be represented in uh, Volume 3. Uh, so that was on pre-order. I was just going on the site to check when it was actually uh, coming out and I had a quick look through their catalogue and ended up buying some albums off them. <laughs> um, first up was an artist I've heard of for quite a long time but never explored her music uh, and that's Jane Weaver and her album The Silver Globe which is two, 2014 yeah, 2014. Um, like I said, I'd heard of uh, Jane, but I'd never really uh, bothered checking her out. I knew her um, uh, music was electronic-based, but I must admit I thought it would be just sort of a synth-pop. This does go towards the synth-pop uh, end of things on a couple of tracks, but there's more to it uh, than that. Uh, I quite enjoyed it. I need to give it a, a further listens, obviously, uh, I think, to get more out of it. But uh, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, Rob, uh, Rob Walker showed, uh, I think, her latest album in one of his recent videos. Um, so uh, maybe I should check that one out. But I was uh, nicely surprised by this. I, I wish I'd uh, checked her out earlier. Next up was a long lost record that Finders Keepers had resurrected and this is Susan Christie with Painter Lady. Susan Christie was a singer songwriter and uh, interpreter of other people's songs uh, from the US. Uh, this album was recorded in 69 uh, but I think only a few copies made it on to a sort of like private pressing in 1970. Um, this is excellent sort of um, acid uh, folk material or folk funk as they put it on here. Uh, some of the backing's quite heavy in places, maybe a little bit too heavy on one or two of the tracks. But um, she does... Uh, version of Ghost Riders in the Sky. The title track's excellent. There's a really trippy song called Yesterday Where's My Mind, the last nine minutes. It's really psychedelic. Uh, it's a shame she never did anything more, I don't think, after this, but uh, this is excellent. 
this sh uh, pretty short album though, uh, but well worth having. Next up, a couple of uh, soundtracks I picked up, and this is Guy Skornik's soundtrack music to Alejandro's Jodorowsky's Tusk. Not a film I'm uh, aware of. I know of Jodorowsky, uh, but Tusk, I don't know. It's uh, according to the liner notes, it's uh, his disowned attempt at a family film. I can't imagine him doing a family film. Um, the music is written by Guy Skornik. Um, and I'll, I'll dis it's mainly electronic in nature. Uh, I'll read what it says as um, in terms of a description. Uh, it's pre-recorded. Uh, Synth-fueled cosmic pop uh, by Skornik. Uh, these compositions provided Tusk with arabesque New Age synthesis along with full-blown ambitious electro-rock as well as classic French Fender Rhodes driven romanticism. Um, what's it? Uh, yeah, multifarious futuristic pop evokes worthy comparison to Ashra Temple, Eno's Bowie and Suzanne Ciani mapping an unlikely journey between magma and 10 cc in the progress uh, in the process sorry uh, i want to listen to side one of this and it was excellent i really enjoyed it um, steve hillage plays on one track um, but uh, i'm looking forward to giving it a, a further listen game and finishing it off and the final one I got from Finders Keepers is another soundtrack and this is the soundtrack for the film Les Frisons de Vampires or the Shiver of Vampires or something if my French uh, O level bears up. Uh, it's a film by the uh, French uh, director Jean Laurent uh, from I think the early 70s I think I'm thinking it's about early 73 I can't remember it's early 70s one of his vampire movies um, the music's done by a band called Acanthus who I think were better known Bear with me under the name Unity. Uh, this is great psych music. Um, after this, I uh, hadn't seen the movie. I'd seen some of John Jean Roland's other movies, but I hadn't seen this one, so I went and watched it. Um, and it's, I don't know how old fair you are with uh, Roland's. Uh, films but it's that typical uh, European horror films of the 70s uh, don't expect a lot of logic or story but great uh, weird visuals beautiful uh, visuals uh, and the film's really enjoyable uh, so but the soundtrack is superb Great psychedelic, uh, early psychedelic music. So I might be checking out some more of the uh, Finders Keepers soundtracks if this is anything to go by. Right, uh, record store day. Drop one was back in June. There wasn't a lot that I was particularly interested in, um, but I did pick up a couple of items online. Um, the first one was this album, The Incredible Bongo Band, with their album Bongo Rock, or Michael Viner's Incredible Bongo Band. As you can imagine, this is instrumental uh, music, heavily percussive, using bongos and such like um, 
with lots of brass as well. Uh, they do uh, a cover on here of Inner Garda de Vida, uh, the Shadows of Patches, there's Let There Be Drums, plus a, a number of uh, self written songs. This was done in 1972. I think uh, the band only ever did two, um, two albums and then that was the end. Uh, it's great fun. Um, I think the originally the music came about through uh, Michael Viner being asked to do music for the film The Man With Two Brains and a couple of the tracks are on here were featured in the film became popular and so he uh, uh, decided to expand the material to a, an album. I think Jim Gordon of uh, Derek and the Dominoes plays drums on this as far as, and it's also said that uh, Ringo Starr dropped in at one point and uh, added a few beats. So good fun. But then the other one I got was of course the Magnificent Focus with their album singles deep cuts and bbc live this is a double album and it says it's got on it what it says on the packet so some of their single cuts of uh, tracks like uh, hocus pocus and uh, sylvia some deep cuts from some of the albums so you get um, Things like Focus 2, Peas March, Harm Scarum, uh, Red Sky at Night. And then the sides 3 and 4 uh, were recorded live at the BBC. Um, this is on uh, Music on Vinyl. I've got, I think, just about all of this material spread across two or three different other albums. The live material I've got on a uh, really good quality, unofficial album. But... In the end, I couldn't resist buying this. Um, not listened to it yet, but I know the material. And I know it's going to be superb. Um, so I thought I'd just show one more item. Um, in the past, I've shown this set, uh, Electric Muse, the story of folk into rock, a four LP set that came out in the mid 70s and was basically my introduction to a lot of folk uh, and folk rock acts. A brilliant album. They eventually in 96 uh, put it out on CD. I think they expanded it a bit, had to change some of the tracks. Um, but then in 97 a second volume came out. This was New Electric Muse to the continuing story of folk into rock which updated the story a bit and included acts like uh, Jez Lowe, Billy Bragg, uh, The Barely Work, Sugar Nifty and others as well as some of the uh, obvious, obvious uh, people like uh, the Albion Band and Fairport and Steel Eye. I think there was then another one in 2008, but I think the, mate, the guys who put together the others didn't have anything to do with that and it didn't have the booklet and was less successful. Uh, but in the last month, we've got the, this book come out, uh, The Electric Muse Revisited, The Story of Folk into Rock and Beyond. Um, this, which I didn't realise when I ordered it, is actually uh, this book plus a hundred pages of new material so you get so two-thirds is this book and then the last third is new material written by Robin Denslow bringing the story right up to date um, and to accompany it there is a four CD set uh, which, like I said, brings this right up to date. So you get bands like Stick in the Wheel, you get artists like Sam Neill, Olivia Cheney, The Rails, uh, Offer Rex, Imagine Village, uh, along with some of the uh, the old names like Shelley Collins, Bridget and Linda Thompson, Steel Eye, Albion Dance Band, 
the Oyster Bug. Um, I've only listened to the first two uh, CDs, uh, but it's, uh, I've enjoyed those. Um, so I think anybody who's interested in that uh, original set might be interested in this too. Anybody that's into folk music. Anyway, that's it, folks. Um, I'll hope to be able to do the next part of my um, Krautrock series soon. Otherwise, it'll never get finished. Um, so I hope you all uh, enjoy the weekend. Uh, take care, and I will see you soon. <laughs>